minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Um, okay, but how about you personally? When someone comes into the room, when you're choosing, when you're picking, yes. what are you looking for? Okay. What are you looking for? Okay, first and foremost, I always feel like I'm walking, like I'm the one, I'm the doctor going in to see the patient. I do a little bit of homework on each person. I look at their picture, I look at their resume. Um, and I'm not, it's almost like going on a blind date, to be honest with you, because some of the greatest people, I'm like, oh my God, this person looks amazing. And they come in and they're, it, it's a mess. It's just a mess. It's the right, it's like making the best cake ever. And I never know walking into the room if I'm going to fall in love or if I'm going to fall in bleh. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes I'll see the picture and I'll, I don't really want to meet this person. And they're just magic in the room. I see magic all the time and I love that. Um, I do make you, if you don't have an extensive resume, I do make you do a scene or a monologue for me. Because I need to see what I am doing, okay? A lot of people, agents don't do that because they don't think with an actor's mind. And... I had a kid come in, not a kid, he's a young adult. Um, he had an okay picture, nothing on his resume. The African-American guy literally blew me away. I was like, I have to represent you. You cannot leave my, this room. I'm going to cry. If, like it got, I was so compelled to have this actor to represent him. His manager had many other meetings for him. And I was on him like white on rice. But not... Horribly. I would do it through the manager, just checking in, just checking in. I got him as a client. He's been with me for three months. Every single audition he's had, he's had a producer meeting. Amazing. I know what I was doing. Yeah. Sometimes the other part is, you know, if I have five girls, African-American girls, 35 to 40, most likely I'm not going to take the meeting because I've committed to those people. But I will tell you there are some great... Um, uh, little <coughs> golden nuggets I can give you. Be confident, okay? Not overconfident and not underconfident. Be engaging, okay? If I'm doing all the talking, this is not a great meeting, okay? Because I know about me. I want to know about you. And usually when I'll start a meeting, I'll say, tell me about yourself. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> I'll never forget. One girl, actually, I'll never forget this. She's a brilliant girl. She told me how her parents were swingers. And it was the funniest story. I said, and I fell in love because you never, I never expected something. Tell me about you. Like, well, I was da da da. I want to hear interesting little pieces. That's exciting to me. We talk about actors actually knowing themselves. Yes, a lot of people <laughs> don't really know themselves. Yeah. And I love when I say, well, what type of roles do you see yourself playing? And I see this guy who is not a leading man, and he's telling me he's going to play a leading man. I'm thinking, oh, we're not going to, we're not going to be a good fit. <laughs> Sometimes I do have to guide people to the, to the right side, and I'm brutally honest. But I've learned in my 30 years that I try to use the word brutal and just say really honest now because people don't necessarily want to hear the truth, and that prohibits me from representing somebody too. I had a woman who insists she doesn't play in her 50s. Well, she plays in her 50s and I'm getting to the point now like I don't think we're the right fit. And it is, it's the fit because this isn't CAA where you have 20 agents looking over you and if one it doesn't really get you it's okay. Um, like I said I go into every relationship with an actor with the idea that we're going to be hugely successful. And I would say about 60% of the time I get it right. No one gets it right 100% of the time. Nobody. That's why there's so many agents. We could all be under one roof and we'd all kill each other. Um, but, and, and it's understanding, you know what I really like when someone asks me a question? Because I always, do you have a question for me? No, I'm like, really, you have no question? Like, ask me something interesting. I love when people ask me really smart questions. And then I love, and I'll say, that is such a great question. That makes me realize this person is smart. They came to the room prepared. 
be prepared. Do your homework on me. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been in the business X amount of time. I've had many, many success stories. A lot of people will say, oh, I know your client list. And I'm so impressed by that because they came in with their homework done. When someone said, oh, no, I know nothing about you. Well, I really don't want to tell the 30-year story in, in five minutes or less. Um, so I think it's the combination of those. The most important thing in every casting director, we smell fear. Fear has a very, very distinct smell to it. And we prey upon that. Because when you're going to network for a TV show mm -hmm. and you're fearful, you're not getting the job. It is really hard. I won't say which client actor this is, but very, very successful. For the first five years of the, her career, she would go get to the very, very top. And literally, they would tell me, like, she would lose control of her body. Like, she had no control of her body. And then one day, she got brilliant. She got brilliant. And she goes from job to job to job to job. So do you guys know who Chrissy Metz is from This yes. Is Us? Yes. Yeah. Not only was she my assistant, but she's still my very dear friend. And Chrissy completely, you know, she's had the most interesting career because right now where she is is it doesn't matter what she looks like. People are hiring her because she's such a wonderful actress. But she always went in the room as confident as confident could be, even for the small roles. She went years without auditions. And she really has redefined what we consider beauty now on television. And I can embrace that fact that I could represent women who don't have to be a size two and a size four. And it's very rare now that I will tell a woman to lose weight. Yeah. I used to have to do it all the time. Mm. Yeah. And it was so, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And now, maybe once every hundred girls, like if it's a beautiful, beautiful girl, and she can only play the beautiful roles, and she's competing against the Heather Locklears or whoever skinny person is this mm. month, <laughs> you have to be honest with them because they're not, not going to get the role because they're a little bit... Um, left of center. So I think that's very important too. I remember once I had a friend of mine and he said, you know, Jack, here's your problem. You're too fat to be pretty and you're too pretty to be a character actress. Mm -hmm. So thank God I didn't want to be an actress. <laughs> so it didn't bother me. But I think now, 30 years later, I think that would be untrue. Yeah. That would really, really be untrue because the way they view Chrissy is, you know, every red carpet she looks like a, a, a queen. Um, she's so incredibly gifted in that spirit she has. She has a spirit about her that I've never seen in another human being, honestly and truly. And see, guys, something to understand, and she's using Chrissy as an example. She was my, Chrissy was my commercial agent. Oh, and yeah. We talked about authenticity. Chrissy was always like that. Yeah. We would, I would walk in the room and we would talk and laugh for an hour. She was the most confident, yes. charming, sexy woman that yes. I would ever have met because she believed that way. Mm -hmm. So you, all you, everyone in this class has been having problems with embracing their authenticity. Right. And she, she has embraced it, it. To the fullest. And because of that, that's why she works. So... That, I mean, that's the trick. It doesn't matter what you look like, who you are. If you own yourself 100% and believe you're a beautiful human being, which everyone is, mm -hmm. that will work I out. I forgot she was your commercial agent. Yeah. Because yeah. I think, were you with me or were you with Buckwald or whatever? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah, she embraces everything. <clears throat> and you know what? She has either been married or have a boyfriend every day since she's mm. been in L.A. Men. Uh, uh, love her. She's real. Yeah. yeah, she goes on dating sites. They can't. Eat, eat, they can't get enough of her because she's truly. I, I'll never forget this story. I got home one night. I was married, and I said, "Honey, I think I have a crush on Chrissy." And I'm not gay. <laughs> I said, she's so fun to be with. I don't want to leave work every day. We had so much fun. So that's kind of the funny story, but that's what she does to people. It's really knowing the truth of who you are. Yeah. I mean, that's where the, the confidence yeah. is coming from as well and embracing it and acknowledging who you are and also all the things that make you unique to someone else. Right. 
um, which is, uh, that's a beautiful thing too. So how much does an agent get? A million dollars a year. <laughs> how much do you make? We make, very important, only when you work, 10% of what you make. What was the last time someone said, I'm going to go to that store because there's a 10% off sale? Just no. 10%. Okay, 10%. so what's, what's left of 10%? 90%. 90%. 90 so what does that mean? So but she's only getting 10%, so she's going to work going to work very hard, but it's for that yeah, 10%. Yes. But then that also means then that you have to work 90%. 90. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the responsibility is also on you to help your agent too yeah. <coughs> to be working. And now this whole thing, I mean, the media, now Twitter, oh. everything else, how has that changed the industry? I hate I it. <laughs> yes. Oh my goodness, I am not an, I, I really wish I could be more positive and it may be my age, but I find it so, first of all, when I was growing up a celebrity, was kind of mysterious. And Barbara Streisand and Burt Reynolds, and I'm so dating myself, and um, Robert Redford, you didn't, they weren't posting pictures of this, this, and that. So there was this awe, there was this mystery around them. Now, celebrities, you really know them. Mm -hmm. You really know their political views. Mm -hmm. You know what they eat. You know about their kids. You know about what time they go to sleep. I feel it's taken the sexiness of Hollywood away. It's the mystique. Yes. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. the there's some of some celebrities who are a little bit older. They don't do it, and I have so much respect. Then there's, you know, that's the, the to me, there is... It is okay to use social media in a good platform. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't post every day. Oh, look, I had an audition today. Nobody cares, <laughs> including me. I have taken so many people off my Facebook because if you tell me about your audition, I just, I'm not, if you book a job and you're, you know, you did the job and you will never see me with a client on Facebook at a premiere or at a, um, that's not what my job is, okay? My job is to get you jobs. I find the managers and agents who do that, it's called the this, look at me syndrome. Look at me, I have one celebrity client and I'm gonna be, if I was their client, I think, you're not working very hard for me if you're all over town mm -hmm. doing everything else but representing me. Mm -hmm. So I like to keep my <coughs> world private. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Very important, and I know I'm kind of the, not everyone believes in that, but you can use these forums in a select way mm -hmm. and have fun with it, mm -hmm. but not the every 10 minute nonsense. Mm -hmm. If you have that much free time, you need to be in acting class more. Yeah. I think I think it's true, and I think I think you can use it in a way that actually helps you rather yes. than hinders you. Because I don't think people need to know certain things about yes. you anyway, and right. that's yeah. unnecessary. Yeah, yeah. You know, very um, unnecessary. Yeah, and obviously, and if there are people, because I'm not particularly good at some uh -huh. of that, but then when I need to, I would hire someone yes, who's yes. good at that. They yeah. do. What you can hire um, most of the celebrity stuff is it is them, but someone is helping them. Yeah. You have to be, you know, people put stuff up and then it's taken down and put stuff up and then it's taken down. I'm like, oh, I actually put something the other day. It was so innocuous. And someone sent me an email. You really need to take that down. And I said, no, I really don't. <coughs> I really don't. It wasn't about a client. It was about someone who used to work for me and I didn't mention names and I called them lazy. And uh, that's how I felt. And I'm it wasn't on a it was yep <laughs> the person was lazy oh it's not doesn't make you look good I'm like should make them look bad not me <laughs> so you have to watch it I think you, yeah and keep it respectful yes. I think, to a certain extent yeah. and just um, and remember everything is to help you so if you're creating yeah. something about you then you want something which obviously continues your yes sort of your legacy and what it is that you're presenting um, I'm going to do a couple of questions and then we have to. Stop. So, okay, let's. Um, hi, my name is Lillian. Hi, Lillian. Um, what type of classes do you recommend? Like any specific besides just like acting technique, like maybe improv or uh, 
speech or Ale Alexander technique? What do you well, think? you know, this is what I think about. In the 40s, the 30s, the 20s, 30s, and 40s, there was a studio system. Mm -hmm. So Elizabeth Taylor and Debbie Reynolds and Rock Hudson and whoever else was there, and I didn't know these people, I'm not that old. Um, they would go to class from 9 in the morning till 5, and they took diction classes, they took singing classes, they took um, sword fencing, they took movement classes, they took acting classes. Um, I will not say to you, you should do X, Y, and Z. I think what you should do is build a curriculum around what you think your best self is going, like I would never put myself in a dance class. Because there's no way at this age I'm going to learn how to dance. I would do improv. I would do um, public speaking because I do a lot of that. I would do a, um, a uh, audition technique class, voice. voice class. Correct. Are you too young? You can dance if you want to. Oh no! <laughs> no! 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 Okay, just two more. Yeah. Um, my question is in regards to auditioning for an agent or agency and they represent both theatrical and commercial. Uh -huh. When you go in, uh, in regards to choosing the particular monologue or, or uh, the piece that you're, you know, you're bringing mm -hmm. to the table, usually, from my experience, I've, really, I've had an opportunity to only do one versus like showing theatrical and commercial. So from your point of view, when you come in, which would you okay. want to see? In my company, we separate the commercials and the theatrical. So when you meet with my commercial agent, she'll give you a piece of commercial to read. She's not going to ask you to do a monologue because she could care less. Um, for me, I want you to bring in the piece that's going to bring your best self in the room. If you're like, eh, don't bring it in the room. Don't bring it in the room. Okay, Kathy. We've talked about Facebook and all the social media. Uh -huh. How important is it, is it to keep IMDb up? Very important. Okay. Yeah. Because I see a lot of stars that haven't kept it up. Because I go. To they the don't care. Yeah, they don't care because if if you're um if you're Michael Douglas, you don't need to. They're gonna hire you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. But we Thank do. You. All right. You'll stay for some scenes. Of course. Thank you. Let's hear the Thank you.